Right now, dozens of demonstrators are marching more than 26 miles around Madison demanding change in our communities. And President Trump returns to the campaign trail right outside the Oval Office, why his speech is being called dark and divisive. This is News 3 Now at 6. Thanks for joining News 3 Now at 6. I'm Amanda Quintana. Defunding police, funding communities. Their demands protesters have been calling for on Madison streets for months. Madeline O'Neill shows us how today marchers are going a step further. Starting here at the Capitol, this is being called a marathon march with a 26.2 mile route planned through Madison City streets. Organizers say the goal is to reach more people with their message, making it hard to ignore. Start of the marathon march. It's a challenge and we're but we're ready. Ready to go the distance for what they believe in. We'll be out here all day long. Community is uh, the biggest thing that we got here, and we really rely on each other, and that's that's what we're using to really to really drive us. Investing in community is what it's all about, according to organizers of the Marathon March, who agreed to talk with us using first names or aliases only. It's to shine light on the injustice that we still that still are prevalent in our society. Um, it's, it's to shine a light on all the demands. That Those demands include community control of police, firing Matt Kenny, the officer who killed Tony Robinson, and funding rehab and youth programs. In communities of color, uh, we experience uh, racial inequalities. We experience um, just all types of inequality in, throughout our community, in our schools, um, in the services that are provided to us. Marchers plan to head directly to affluent neighborhoods, going as far as it takes to deliver their message loud and clear. Even if you don't like it, you need to learn why we're here. You need to respect why we're here, and we're not going to go anywhere. We are not stopping. We will not stop until we see until the day that we see freedom. Organizers say they hope to be done with the march by sundown. In Madison, Madeline O'Neill, News 3 Now. Those organizers say a march like this took a lot of planning, but it's something they've been hoping to do for a while. Let's get a look at your first warm weather with Chief Meteorologist Gary Canalti. Well, skies were sunny today. Temperatures just weren't quite as mild as yesterday, but it was a perfect fall day. Take a look at the live view from the Edgewater Sky Cam in downtown Madison. We're getting close to sunset, and skies are still mostly clear. You can see across Wisconsin, not a cloud to be found anywhere around the state. Temperatures right now have cooled off into the lower 60s in Madison, still 71 in Boscoville, mainly 60s west of Madison and 50s to the east, and temperatures will be cooler for tonight. In fact, we'll be dropping down into the middle 40s by early tomorrow morning. Look for mostly clear skies overnight, but skies become variably cloudy tomorrow. A little more cloud cover will keep temperatures down a bit more. High temperature, though, still not bad at 66, but later on I'll take a look at a forecast that includes much more fall-like weather toward the end of next week. Thank you so much, Gary. One man is in the hospital after an early morning shooting at a Stoughton bar. Police say they responded to Shaker Saloon on Shallot Drive around 2 o'clock. A 26-year-old man was taken by med flight to Edgerton Hospital. Police say it appears to be a targeted attack, but nobody is in custody right now. Anyone with information is asked to contact Stoughton Police. Turning to our coronavirus headlines, Wisconsin is just 2,000 cases away from 150,000 all-time infections. The Badger State surpassed the 100,000 case mark just three weeks ago tomorrow. DHS and county dashboards show an increase of 2,200 cases over the last 24 hours. 14 more people have died, while about 30,000 of the state's 147,000 cases remain active. Meanwhile, an influential coronavirus model projects nearly 395,000 thousand deaths in the U.S. by the start of February. That's about 181,000 more deaths between now and then. The model says if social distancing measures are eased, there could be more than 500,000 deaths by that same time. At the White House, President Trump made his first public appearance since he tested positive for the coronavirus. In an event called a peaceful protest for law and order, the president discussed the pandemic, racial justice, the economy, and Joe Biden. CBS News' Michael George has more. First of all, I'm feeling great. I don't know about you. How is everyone feeling? Five days after leaving the hospital, President Trump spoke from the White House balcony, addressing conservative supporters gathered on the South Lawn. We're starting very, very big with our rallies and with our everything because we cannot allow 
our country to become a socialist nation. His remarks focused largely on the November 3rd election, but the president touched on the coronavirus that landed him in the hospital just over a week ago. Science, medicine will eradicate the China virus once and for all. We'll get rid of it all over the world. As he resumes public events, it's not clear if the president has tested negative. On Friday night, he appeared in what was billed as a remote medical evaluation by Dr. Mark Siegel, a Fox News medical contributor. Are you tested? I, I, heard, you, I heard you said you were going to test again today. Have you been retested? Uh, I have been retested, and I, I haven't even found out numbers or anything yet, but I've been retested. And I know I'm at either the bottom of the scale or free. Democratic nominee Joe Biden said the president needs to be open about his status. That he is clear. He is not a spreader. President Trump is recovering from the coronavirus. And so is America. A new Trump campaign ad focuses on the COVID-19 pandemic. Infectious disease doctor Anthony Fauci is also in the ad and appears to praise the president. President Trump tackled the virus head on as leaders should. I can't imagine that anybody could be doing more. But in that interview excerpt, Fauci is talking about the White House Coronavirus Task Force, not the president. Michael George, CBS News. President Trump plans to hold his first official campaign rally since his release from the hospital on Monday night near Orlando. There's more on News 3 Now at 6. A new temporary shop on Madison's west side is hoping to help artists and give you a new craft for your home. And tonight on News 3 Now at 10, a multi-million dollar park in Prairie de Sac finally breaks ground. What local leaders hope Culver Park will add to the community. That's tonight at 10. We took a bad economy that was falling and turned it around. Trump took a good economy and drove it back into the ditch through his failure to get COVID under control, his failure to deliver real relief to working people. Does he not understand and see the tens of millions of people who've had to file for unemployment this year so far? The people who lost wages while the cost of groceries have gone up dramatically? Donald Trump has been almost singularly focused on the stock market, the Dow and NASDAQ. Not you, not your families. My plan will help create at least 5 million new, good-paying jobs and create them right here in the United States of America. Let's use this opportunity to take bold investments in American industry and innovation so the future is made in America. I'll be laser-focused on working families. message. Wisconsin is a home of workers. We know it needs to get done and we do it. Yet we've been hit hard, some harder than others. Our contact may be limited, but we still can lift each other up. The Keep Wisconsin Warm Cool Fund and your local energy providers are working together to help keep your heat and power on. You may not ask for it, but we want you to know we're here. We all know that we must fix our criminal justice system. Here is Joe Biden's plan to reform it. Ending mandatory minimum sentences, ending private prisons, and end cash bail. A real plan for real change. I believe my criminal justice reform package is as strong or stronger than anyone else, than anyone has proposed. We will create a system that's fair and just. And we can get there together. I'm Joe Biden, and I approve this message. Watching News 3 Now at 6. A new shop on Madison's West Side hopes it can help struggling artists this holiday season. Kylie's Gift Cottage hosted its grand opening this morning with more than 20 permanent artists and 15 visiting artists. The temporary shop hopes to sell local arts and crafts. Artists say they're hurting right now during the pandemic and they still need a place to showcase their work. People still are out there shopping, artists are still out there making, and you know, we just need to connect in a different way at this time. We thought that this might be a good alternative, keeping the st store smaller, keeping it safe, limited number of people in here, you know, with masks and, and uh, hand sanitizer and all that good stuff. Uh, you know, hopefully this will be a, a way that people will feel comfortable to come to the store and can enjoy art. 
The Odana Road Shop will be open Fridays and Saturdays from 10 until 5 and Sundays from 10 until 4. Kylie's Gift Cottage plans on closing on December 28th. Still ahead on News 3 Now at 6, the latest on Hurricane Delta as it makes its way through the Gulf Coast. Plus chances for showers to end the weekend around here. Gary's back with your first one forecast next. Question, are you happy with your Medicare plan? Want to get more for your money? Take a look at Quartz Medicare Advantage plans in partnership with UW Health. Quartz Medicare Advantage plans start at $0 a month, including coverage for medical, hospital, and prescriptions. With $5 primary care visits, $0 preventive care, specialist co-pays as low as $25, and new this year, $0 telehealth visits, allowing you to see a doctor from the comfort of home. It's no wonder that 98% of our members choose to stay with Quartz. That's loyalty we strive to earn every day. Learn more by requesting your free planning guide from Quartz today, featuring cost and coverage details, plus other information to help you choose the right plan for you. Quartz Medicare Advantage plans also offer more value, with plans including preventive and comprehensive dental benefits with up to $550 reimbursement, vision benefits with up to $300 reimbursement for glasses or contacts, coverage for hearing exams and hearing aid co-pays as low as $700 per aid, and up to $160 reimbursement for over-the-counter health-related items. Quartz Medicare Advantage also includes fitness benefits and our new Snowbird travel benefits, giving you the same as in-network coverage as you travel across America. All from a plan that works closely with and gives you easy access to UW Health an integrated health system serving more than 600,000 people each year. Together, we help you live well. Switch to Quartz Medicare Advantage. Call 888-718-7756 or visit quartzmedicareplans.com slash enroll to request your free planning guide from Quartz today. That's 888-718-7756. Donald Trump is lying about Medicare and Social Security. Trump's pushing to slash Medicare benefits. He's proposed eliminating the funding source for Social Security, a plan that would drain Social Security by 2023. Joe Biden will protect Medicare, and he's proposed a plan to increase Social Security benefits. The choice is clear. Donald Trump will cut Medicare and Social Security. Joe Biden will protect them. I'm Joe Biden, and I approve this message. You are watching News 3 Now at 6. A powerful hurricane swept through the Gulf Coast overnight, delivering yet another punch to the hurricane-ravaged area. Residents in the region woke up this morning to assess the damage from Delta. It made landfall, landfall as a powerful hurricane as a powerful Category 2 hurricane. Officials warned that even once the storm has passed, it's still a dangerous situation. Treat every power line that's down as if it's live. Uh, don't go out sightseeing. You're going to interrupt uh, first responders and people who may be needing to do search and rescue. Winds were estimated near 100 miles per hour last night. More than 700,000 customers were without power along the Gulf Coast this morning. Up to 17 inches of rain fell in central Louisiana near Alexandria. Even as Delta continues to weaken, it may spawn a few tornadoes in Alabama and Georgia. Let's get a look at your first warm weather with Chief Meteorologist Gary Canalti. Well, the good news is from Delta is that it's winding down pretty quickly, but you can see the heavy amounts of rain that it brought from Louisiana northeastward into uh, parts of Arkansas and Mississippi. But because the storm started to accelerate as it moved inland, uh, that limited the rainfall amounts farther to the north. But you can see around Alexandria, maybe as much as 17 inches of rain. Now, that was over about a two to three day period because there were some of the outer bands that moved in well ahead of Delta. So spreading it out over three days still caused a lot of flooding, but not as bad as if it fell over a, maybe a six to 12 hour period, as often happens with a tropical system. The center of Delta is really weakening across parts of central Mississippi right now, but showers and thunderstorms out ahead of the, uh, the system uh, continue to bring a threat for an isolated tornado over parts of eastern Alabama. Tornado watch there in effect until 8 p.m., but most of the rain starting to wind down and is much lighter than it was uh, 24 hours ago. Three things you need to know in our forecast. Still looking for dry weather tomorrow, but there'll be a 
a little more cloud cover and that will uh, keep our temperatures down a little bit, probably mid 60s for highs compared to the lower 70s that we had today. Shower chances now look to be highest from late tomorrow night into Monday morning and the showers could actually be out of here pretty early on Monday morning according to the very latest computer models. But the cool weather really begins uh, toward the end of next week. Temperatures will still be in the 60s for uh, Monday, Tuesday and Wednesday, but by Thursday highs will only be in the lower 50s and will be in the upper 40s to low 50s into next weekend. So as Delta winds down here, there's one more area of disturbed weather here that bears some watching uh, for potential uh, development over the next few days that moves westward. But right now the tropics are pretty quiet. In the Pacific Ocean, we're seeing a change in the overall weather pattern. A couple of big storm systems north and west of Hawaii starting to slow the jet stream down there. There's a big area of high pressure offshore uh, from the west coast of North America. That's keeping the warmest air just off the coast, but eventually that will start working inland. And as it does so, the jet stream will push to the north toward Alaska and then start diving southeastward into the Midwest. And that's what will buckle the jet stream and cause our temperatures to turn cooler by the end of next week. So it's still a few days down the road. Right now our upper, upper level winds are from the west southwest, so our temperatures still stay fairly mild for this time of year, even though a cold front came through late yesterday. But winds now are out of the northeast and that's keeping temperatures for the most part uh, in at least across Wisconsin in the 50s closer to Lake Michigan, 60s across the rest of the state. Forecast for tomorrow calls for a high temperature of 66 degrees, a little more cloud cover than today, but still not a bad day by fall standards. The showers you can see early on Monday morning uh, approaching from the west by 3 a.m. They're moving to the western part of our viewing area by 6 a.m. moving through the Madison area and by 9 a.m. They may be out to the east of us with skies clearing out during the afternoon hours. Rainfall amounts because of the fast movement generally around a quarter to a half inch, maybe a couple of places close to three quarters of an inch of rain. Seven to 10 day forecast calls for temperatures to still be in the 60s for the middle part of next week. But notice that big drop in temperatures as a cold front comes through Wednesday night. We'll see some shower chances then. I did take the flurries out, or the mix of rain and snow showers out of the forecast Saturday night into Sunday morning. Looks like temperatures might be just a couple of degrees warmer and that'll make the difference. But during the day, highs in the lower 50s will still be pretty chilly. Those 70, almost 80 degree fall days are behind us, it seems. <laughs> Gotta wait till next year now. <laughs> All right. Thank you so much, Gary. We'll be right back. Good Green Now First Warn Weather is brought to you by Lazy Boy Home Furnishings and Decor. Discover a shopping and design experience as comfortable as the furniture. Lazy Boy Home Furnishings and Decor. Schedule your free design consultation today. When you put money in a big bank, there it goes. But when you keep your money at Associated Bank, it gets invested close to home. It might become this family's renovation or help this little one's college fund could build local business or your favorite neighborhood spot. Because when you bank with Associated Bank, your money works in your community. All you have to do is make a simple choice. Send your money there or keep it here. Associated Bank, your money works here. Hey, it's Shackleford. Did you say Shackleford? Yeah, they replaced my old furnace with a new carrier furnace. You know, turn to the experts. Oh. Shackleford. They fixed my furnace with no surprises. Did someone say Shackleford? Shackleford. Book your fall maintenance check today. Donald Trump is lying again. Joe Biden will not raise taxes on anyone making under $400,000. Biden will close tax loopholes for big corporations. Trump's tax cut giveaway exploded our debt, so he's threatening Social Security and Medicare. Biden will make the wealthy and big corporations pay their fair share so we can protect Social Security and Medicare and invest in schools and health care. I'm Joe Biden, and I approve this message. The pandemic is spreading, and people with pre-existing health conditions are most at risk. But Donald Trump is still trying to repeal protections for people with pre-existing conditions. Joe Biden took on the insurance companies and forced them to cover pre-existing conditions. As president, he'll give Americans the choice to buy public health insurance like Medicare and bring down costs by negotiating with hospitals and drug companies. Joe has a plan. FFPAC's responsible for the content of this ad. I can't believe it. What? That our new house is haunted by Casper the Friendly Ghost. Hey, Jill. Hey, Kurt. <gasps> Movies? Oh. I'll get snacks. <laughs> no, I can't believe how easy it was to save hundreds of dollars on our car insurance with Geico. I got snacks. Ooh, I got popcorn. I got caramel corn. I got kettle corn. Right, right. Am I so loud? Believe it. Geico could save you 15% or more on car insurance. 
With just three weeks to go, many political experts say the candidate that wins Wisconsin will win the election, and that could ultimately come down to the state's black voters. We're talking to Madison's Black Chamber of Commerce. Join us Sunday at 6.30. You are watching News 3 Now at 6. Welcome back. Today is World Mental Health Day, an international day for global mental health education, awareness, and advocacy against social stigma. Amid lockdowns and social isolation during the coronavirus pandemic, the mental health of many around the world has been severely affected. Isa Suarez explains. The sun may be shining on Pip Rudge, but this 23-year-old knows that a dark cloud could come at any moment. Having an ice cream since I was like I haven't had eight. For, ice cream. for months now, she's been seeking treatment for anxiety and depression, exacerbated by COVID-19. I just felt like hopeless. Um, I felt like there was nothing in the future that I was going to be able to accomplish, and I just felt completely lost and alone really so it was really hard and I was struggling with self-harm at the time as well um, and it was just one of those really really dark places that I just hope that I never get back to. Like so many others lockdown and isolation pushed her mental health to the brink as her support network crumbled and she was unable to seek the help of mental health professionals. She says a suicide attempt forced her to be admitted to a psychiatric hospital for three weeks. These images show her inside the ward. According to a June report from mental health charity Mind, the devastating loss of life, the impact of lockdown and the inevitable recession has made life bleaker for those with mental health problems, with 65% of adults and 75% of young people reporting their mental health got worse during lockdown. What we've seen during lockdown and immediately after is uh, people contacting us because they're having difficulty accessing their formal support services. Unfortunately, there seem to be more young people self-harming as a coping strategy. With the number of COVID-19 infections on the rise here in the UK and in Europe, and more restrictions being put in place, the European Centre for Disease Prevention and Control is warning about the impact of new lockdowns on people's mental health. When you hear the Prime Minister talk about further restrictions, do you worry about that? How about lockdown? How does that? What kind of anxiety is that creating you? It does make me anxious that ultimately I would end up back in hospital or I would be really, really, really struggling with my mental health. All I can do is look after myself, take it day by day. For now, Raj maintains her support network and says she's focusing on the positives, her small victories. So, like, I have, like, an app on my phone and I'm, like, 133 days self-harm free and, like, I'm really proud of that. Small steps that will give her a better chance to overcome her darkest demons should lockdown come knocking again. If you or someone you know is experiencing mental health difficulties, a directory of resources and hotlines is provided by the International Association for Suicide Prevention. Or you can call the National Suicide Prevention Lifeline. That is the number on your screen, 800-273-8255. As Americans continue to grapple with ways to practice social distancing during the pandemic, even short encounters with the delivery person or a neighbor could be a cause for some anxiety. One solution is a video doorbell. As Josh Spreider explains, Consumer Reports says not only can a video doorbell provide security and peace of mind, it can also provide a safe way to greet people at your front door. Brandon Murphy's video doorbell was a car saver when it captured his neighbor's vehicle being stolen in the middle of the night. The neighbor said his car got stolen. So the first thing I thought, well, we save five days worth of camera feeds off of the smart doorbell. Sure enough, it was on there. Because they were able to confirm the car was stolen, their neighbor worked with local police and was able to retrieve the car with absolutely no damages found. And Brandon's not the only homeowner benefiting from video doorbells. In fact, video doorbell global sales are predicted to grow to $1.4 billion by 2023. Not only can they help with security and peace of mind of homeowners, but when synced up to a smart speaker like an Amazon Echo or Google Home, you can now answer your door while keeping a safe distance using just your voice. Hi, Renata. Come on in. So how do you set up a hands-free front door experience? CR says the best thing to do is to keep it in the family. There are video doorbells that claim they work with digital assistance, but they might not offer all the features to ensure compatibility. Just stay within the same product ecosystem or product family. 
If you're a Google Home user, CR recommends the Nest Hello Video Doorbell paired with the Google Nest Hub Max Smart Speaker. As for Amazon Smart Speaker owners, CR says a perfect pairing is the Ring Video Doorbell 3 and the Amazon Echo Show. Once you're all set up, you'll be able to talk to your visitors from even the farthest point of your home. How's that for social distancing? For Consumer Reports, I'm Josh Breider, News 3 Now. And as with... As with any connected device, they can be hacked, so make sure to look for that. Sending mail might get a little more expensive in 2021. The U.S. Postal Service has filed notice with the Postal Regulatory Commission that it's planning to increase prices. The new proposal raises the price for first-class mail by 1.8% and all other categories by 1.5%. Some prices will remain unchanged, like the forever stamp at 55 cents. Others will go up one cent. The commission will review the changes before they're scheduled to take effect on January 24th. All right, well, now the 70, 80 degree days in the fall are gone, but it's not going to get. See, that, that's the problem. You get spoiled, I, you know, by I having, having temperatures so, you know, so warm. But you know what? I mean, this is almost perfect timing this time of year. Real fall. Is when we start to get into the, yeah. you know, the more significant fall weather. First of all, let's take a look at the uh, sunset here from the live view from the WISC oh. Skycam. Just a beautiful day. We've had uh, clear skies all day long. You can see the sun just starting to set in the west. Now, over the next 10 days, those temperatures still not too bad for tomorrow, mid 60s, lower to middle 60s from Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. Again, the shower chance is probably highest from late tomorrow night into early Monday morning, but the rest of Monday actually may clear out pretty nicely. Where we take the next big step down is on from Wednesday night into Thursday. Temperatures drop into the lower 50s for Thursday, upper 40s for Friday, and stay in the lower 50s next weekend and into the start of the following week. I did take out the snow flurry chance or the chance of rain and snow showers for Saturday night into Sunday morning. It looks like temperatures will be just warm enough to prevent that from happening. But the 6 to 10 day uh, temperature outlook from the Climate Prediction Center just in calls for below normal temperatures, the highest probabilities right about over Wisconsin. The warmer the normal weather shifts out to the west. And then as far as precipitation is concerned, look for below normal precipitation through much of the southern part of the United States. This is good, good news from where they had all the rain from Delta. The highest uh, probabilities of above normal precipitation shift into the northern and northeastern parts of the country. 8 to 14 day temperature outlook. This takes us through October 18th through the 24th and you can see those temperatures remaining below normal with above normal temperatures uh, mainly along the east coast and in the southwestern part of the country and notice precipitation. Still above normal in the Midwest but that's mainly from lighter showers that just kind of move through it almost every other day intervals at that point. The drier the normal weather continues out west and in the southeastern part of the country so long range that is good news for them. Now, as far as temperatures right now we're in the upper 50s to our west temperatures still in the 60s, but 50s to the east of Madison. For tomorrow, look for skies to turn variably cloudy. High temperature 66, a little cooler than today, but still not bad by October standards. As we look at the 7 to 10 day forecast, again, the shower chances will be highest from tomorrow night into early Monday morning. Maybe a thunderstorm in there as well. Then dry and sunshine for the rest of Monday. Temperatures in the 60s for Tuesday and Wednesday, and then you can see that drop not only in the daytime high temperatures, look at the nighttime low temperatures dropping to around 30 by Saturday morning. But again, Saturday night, temperatures in the upper 30s, probably a little bit too warm to get some flakes of snow mixed in with the rain then, but we'll see. We'll see. All right, thanks so much for joining us. Have a great night.